tonight's action fest spectacular, the punishing powerball. Swinging, clinging pendulum. Swinging, stinging duel. Plus the battle of the headscarves. Wolf and Vulcan square up on gladiators. Now meet your presenters, Jeremy Guscott and Erika Johnson. Arena here in Birmingham and to our preliminary heats that of course means it's the first time our contenders meet our gladiators but if they want to get their hands on those prizes they're gonna have to face them a further three times and what prizes they are the winners of gladiators 1998 will each receive 1,000 pounds plus they will both drive off in one of these incredible four-wheel drive trucks To dampen the disappointment for the runners-up, well, we're also going to give them £1,000. Plus, we're going to jet them off to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So let's crack on with the show. Let's meet tonight's female contenders. They are Margot McMillan. And Sarah Hasselby. Well, Margot, listen to me, you've got a noisy crowd there. Who, who's in the crowd here for you tonight? Oh, well, my boyfriend and my two stepdaughters and my daughter, my mum and dad and sisters. And, and about 190 friends. other people. <laughs> Tell us a bit about yourself, what you do and where you're from. Um, I'm a motor mechanic to trades. I come from Stirling in Scotland. Fantastic, yeah. A fully qualified motor mechanic. There can't be many women in that job, is there? No, it's a bit of a man's world, the uh, mechanic, and so anything wow. men can do, we can do better. You better believe it! <laughs> and you also, um, you're into a little bit of motocross, aren't you? Yeah, and again, a man's world, and um, we just have to beat wow. them as well. <laughs> uh, so you go to quite a few meetings, and one thing in my life. Yeah, usually every Sunday we're at the... Wow. How are you feeling? How are you fancying your chances tonight? Yeah, it's been hard going on the training week, so I'm just go for it and do my best, 110%. Just go for it. That's what we like to hear. Let's hear it for Margot McMillan. Sarah, you've got a huge smile on your face, and rightly so. I mean, it looks like you've got a lot of support. I mean, good luck banners such as Go Sa Sonic Sarah. Sonic Sarah, that's from the outreach lot. Woo! Sarah, just tell us uh, what you do and where you come from. Uh, I'm a fitness instructor and I'm wow. from Scunthorpe! Yeah. It sounds as if you've got the whole of Scunthorpe with you. Exactly, yeah. Brilliant supporters. Thank you very much for coming. Friends and family? Yeah. Everybody. Friends, family, work friends. Everybody's come. Thanks. The boyfriend? My boyfriend's here as well. Woo! <laughs> how's, your, uh, how's your training gone for gladiators? Um, it's gone all right, yeah. Doing a bit of circuit training, uh, gym work, running. Just trying to do a varied amount of exercises, yeah. Well, let's hope it's all worthwhile. Let's give it up for Sarah Hasselby. Now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are James Barrow and Colin Curran. Oh, James, how are you feeling? Fine, fine, feel really well. Just up for it now. I bet you are. Tell us what you're doing, where you're from. I'm from Burnley, and I work on a farm. So you're, a, you're a herdsman? Yeah, herdsman. Milk cows, morning and night. My goodness, that must keep you pretty fit. Well, yeah, yeah. Chasing after cows and everything, it's, you know, <laughs> got to run around a lot, so it's quite good. Um, what other sort of fitness do you do? Because I understand that, as well as working all the hours God sends, you also go down to the gym as well. How do you have time for that? Well, uh, I finish work at six, and then I go training straight after work until about eight o'clock, most nights a week. So, and then boxing away. And have you um, been doing any special training? Well, you did tell me about some things that you've been getting up to on the farm while the mil the cows are being milked. Yeah, well, uh, in the parlor we have uh, bars which I can swing on. So whilst cows are being milked, in between that, I can practice my hang tough. So. And what about Jewel? Jewel, I've made a. Uh, a long seven foot stick and I've been down at the boxing club training, I've been banging the bags with that, so I've been practicing the duel as well. Taking it pretty seriously then? Oh yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be. So how do you fancy your chances tonight? I'm just here to enjoy myself really, and then just, if it comes off, it comes off, and I've just gotta really enjoy myself, put everything I can into it. 
Well, that's fantastic to hear. Let's hear it for James Barrow. <laughs> Colin, can you actually believe you're here in this arena? No, Jeremy, I can't believe that I'm here in the arena. It's just a dream come true. A dream come true. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do and where you come from? Well, I'm a fitness instructor back at Belfast and Peak Music. That's Gary Cliffs. <laughs> and uh, I do a bit of stripping at home as well. A bit of stripping? Tell us more. Well, Arika might want to know more. Well, I do a lot of birthday parties, hen nights, back at Belfast, discos and stuff like that. So you're feeling a little bit overdressed tonight? Eh, uh, yep. Can't wait to get the kid off. You, you going the whole way, the full Monty? Eh, uh, no, not really. Not the full Monty. It's all a bit of fun. Yeah. Great. How much have you enjoyed the training, getting ready for all this? Eh, uh, the training is very tough. Sitting back at home, you think it's very easy, but these games are at least 20 times harder than they look. Are you going to be a little bit of a, a superstar back in Northern Ireland after appearing on this show? Eh... Uh, yeah, I hope, so. I hope so. Well, I'm really here to do my mum and dad proud, okay, and the rest of the guy. Well, they're all here to support you and wish you the best of luck. Let's give it up for Colm Curran. Well, we've met our contenders, so let the games begin. <laughs> our first female contender is Margot. She's facing Bo. Over to John Anderson. Lock it. And the ladies get a grip on the bone. And Vogue, not the first time she's been on the pull. Contender! The object of the exercise for Margot is to pull Vogue out of the ring before the half minute elapses. Margot, the motor mechanic, could do with a tow truck to help her shift Vogue. Margot with plenty of effort, but very little in the way of haulage. If she lets go of the dog bone, she forfeits the event. But the Sterling girl will need to do Sterling work if she's to pull 10 from this encounter. And Vogue barely troubled despite Margot's industry. Mum to two-year-old Jensen, it's just like Margot's trying to take away her favourite toy. The clock has beaten her, and so has Vogue. Margot fails to score in the opener. And Vogue really marred the contenders going. Margot never really got to grips with the situation. Plenty of sweat, but no cigar. Our second female contender is Sarah. And she's facing Vulcan. Well, we've got the measure of Falcon. Here's the result. A metre 70 tall, 70 kilos, 11 stone weight-wise, compared with Sarah. Falcon's five centimetres taller and 12 kilos, just under two stone heavier. None of which bodes well for the contender. Contender ready! Contender ready! Sarah takes a run at it, but Falcon slams on the brakes. Fitness and sports therapist from Scunthorpe, Sarah needs to get in some shift work here if she's to score in this circle. And Falcon likes she's fly fishing. Plays her out, then pulls her back in. Sarah tried to sprint her way out of the ring and into the points, but Falcon's an experienced dog bone exponent. She's not about to fly out of the window. Oh, Sarah heaves to the floor, her arm all but wrenched out of its socket. Sarah's going to win our admiration, but that's about all in this circle of defeat. And the horn saves her further punishment. Brother Vaughan appreciating the energy employed by Sarah, but once the Falcons' talons dig in, they never let go. After one event, Margot scores nil, Sarah scores nil. First up on the pendulum, it's James. And he's going to be facing Ace. Over to John Anderson. Contender! up for a quick two-pointer on his left. He'll add two to his score each time he makes a lit section on that pendulum flash. 60 seconds to avoid the ace and keep that flag away from the gladiator's grip. 
baby son Connor dozes while his grandparents do the screaming and yelling. The ace in control, hardly the best view of him for James, but ace has the winning hand in this situation. James going south, kicks a last ditch, four points, but ace wins it. Good, fast work from ace, six more in the pot for James. And an ace sure-footed, bare-faced cheek, eases down and snatches the prize. Aye, thank you. Well, James, six points. Yeah, I'm really delighted with that one. I went round and uh, I went down underneath and he sat on my head and knocked me off. <laughs> Absolutely, but I'm so pleased you managed to stay on it long enough to pick up those four points at the bottom. Let's hear it for James. Well done. <laughs> Next up on the pendulum, it's Colm. And he's going to be facing Hunter. <laughs> Colin Curran from Northern Ireland is up next, and is he pleased to be here, or what? When I first found out that I was picked for the Gladiator show, I just couldn't believe the news. If you weren't up to scratch for being on the show, you wouldn't be here, and that's the truth. OK, before I start, is there anybody who thinks, how oh, did I get into this? I don't want to be on it. Oh, my name's not on the list. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's <laughs> the first thing. OK, in are Julia Ralph, Kate Ruff, Diane Bominio, David Chambers, Con Curran... Yes! Susan yes! England. <laughs> it was a dream come true, really. Three, two, one! Hunter usually turns contenders' dreams into nightmares, but Colm with a very fast two-point opener to his right. Barry, Imelda and Dolores' mum like that, shuffling down to the four-point South Pole sector, taps it with his toe, registers the four points. I was about to say no sign of Hunter, but that would be ridiculous. Here he comes. Colm tucked away on the underbelly, which will make it tougher for Hunter. Colm trying to drag himself up, but can't control his legs. Hunter cutting across, one of the all-time favourites with Gladiator fans. And Colm is presenting him with quite a problem, but Hunter will rise, or in this case, lower himself to the challenge. Colm has six points to add to his total at the moment, and the way the clock's running, it looks like that's how it's going to stay. Colm rooted to the spot, with Hunter covering his move northwards. Hunter knows the minute's running out, but still wants that flag for his trophy cabinet. Easing himself down for the flag-lowering ceremony. Oh, he's gone! Harris by the Huntsman. When it's getting dire, best take a flyer. Imelda knows it. Gravity will always get you, particularly if you're sitting around at the bottom there. It takes a man with very, very strong shoulders to be holding on to the bottom of the pendulum for that length of time. That was terrific. Yeah, it was good fun. I need to build up the points here. I know Hunter's fast, so I just give it my best shot. My finger's playing up. I actually cracked my finger during training, so it was a bit frightening this game. So it was even uh, stronger of you to be holding on. And you did very well. You picked up six points. Those points keep Colm in touch with James. After one event, Colm has six and James has six. <laughs> Time now for our next event. Scoring with the blue balls is Sarah. And scoring with the red balls is Margot. And now facing our gladiators, Fox and Bo. Margot, focused, knows what to expect. Looking forward to it, both of us just to have good fun and just really go for it and the, the best one's going to win, I think. I hope it's me. <laughs> Contenders, ready! Amigos, ready! Three, two, one! Sarah against Vogue, Vogue onto her and driving her down. Margot faces the fox. Turning her every which way, blasts through the centre and scores three for a middle basket. Sarah face to face with Vogue. Vogue wrestles her out of the points. Margot tries the old double clutch shuffle again, but the fox is wise to it now, done with a thud. Sarah looking for the gap. Vogue tries to finish it early. Bundles her down. Margot looking to break free. Find space again. Superb recovery from Fox. Less than 30 seconds to go, both girls reloading. Sarah being closed down before she even has time to take a breath. Gives up the ghost on that run. Sarah needs to up her pace if she's to outstrip Vogue on the powerball pitch. Reloads again. It'll be the same old story. 
Sarah getting a bigger pasting than a poster. Now Fox would have an entire hunt scurrying for cover, horses and all. The girls know the glads have got their measure, so they're winding down faster than the clock. Excellent performance from Fox and Bo. 3-0 to Margot as John Anderson makes that extraordinary noise. They're glad that it's over. But early doors, things look rosy for Margot as she shocked the Fox with that opening triple. Sarah, you're out of breath. I mean, that just shows how hard it is, really, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least Zobo kept you in check there. Uh, yeah, she's a, she's a big lass as well, and it hurts when she lands on you. <laughs> what were the tactics? What were your tactics? Try and shove her past me, but she's too big. She's too big. Margot, I felt, I mean, you, I think you scored one right in the middle there, but on a couple of times, a couple of occasions, you, you kind of got past and then went for the middle, I thought, so you could have actually scored. Inside. Should have went to the side instead of just go, going to the middle. But oh, never mind. Well, let's find out how you both did. We're bringing John Anderson with the scores. Short, short score, no points, and three points to Margot. Let's give it up for Sarah and Margot. Margot's boyfriend, Scott, tips her the week. After two events, Margot's on three, Sarah still to score. Now it's the turn of the boys. Scoring with the blue balls, it's Colum. And, and scoring with the red balls, it's James. And they're up against our gladiators, Rhino and Diesel. Here they come for the Powerball pitch battle. Diesel's debut in this event, the Rhino, an acknowledged master of the art. Over to John Anderson. Contender! Gives Diesel his first taste of Powerball action and he's straight off the mark with two. Rhino grounds his man and makes safe the ball. Colum reloads. Rhino's on his case. Oh, Rhino rougher than an airport baggage handler. As Diesel pile drives James head first into the pitch. Emphatic tackling from Diesel. James realises this isn't going to be as easy as he thought. Diesel sorts him again and Rhino steams into Colum. It's a torrent of testosterone down there on the Powerball pitch. Contenders one-ended, reload, but the Glads have them covered. Herdsman James can't handle Diesel, and Rhino dashes Colum to the floor. James thinking Diesel deserves a pat on the back, but that's no compliment because he works in a cow field. Less than 15 seconds remain, it's looking a bit tired down there. The guys split, but the Glads have them covered. Another pair of fine performances from the Gladiators. Diesel will be pleased to get this one out of the way. Come to think of it, so will both the contenders. A minute can seem like a lifetime when you're being pummeled in Powerball. They'll be pleased to hear that sound. The pummeling's over, but there's more pain to come. And look at the size difference, which makes it even more impressive that James managed to steal two at Diesel's expense. James, a uh, slight, slight size difference between you and Diesel. <laughs> Just a slight. I was actually thinking of going through his legs, but... Uh, Maybe should have tried that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I don't think much chance to put them together. But, like, uh, quite all right. I've tried to get... Big movements, but his long legs are just not, you know, three of my movements are just one of his. But it was a good game, good game. You enjoyed it? Yeah, really well. That's really the name good. of the game. Colin, I think at one, at one stage there, you actually tried going through Rhino. He thinks he's big, but wait till later on. <laughs> wait till later on. He was, I mean, he's, he's defended ever so well, yeah, didn't he's he? very good. Rhino, brilliant. Good job. OK, let's see how you guys got on. Let's bring in John Anderson. Well, again, not a very high-scoring game. Colm, I'm afraid, got no points, but James did really well. Two points. OK, let's give it up for James and Colm. Baby Connor doesn't know what he's missing as he dozes. Two events down, James has eight, Colm six. Still to come on Gladiator, spectacular action on Skytrack. Muscle tussle, turmoil on Hang Tough, and much more after this break. and with both contenders and gladiators hanging upside down, we're about to kick off with our next event. In the outside lane, wearing yellow, it's Sarah! In the inside lane, wearing pink, it's Margot! And they're going to be chased by Lightning and Rebel! Over to John Anderson. Contender! The 
of numbers in this figure of eight are one lap to run, ten points to win, five for second place. Lightning scrambling after Sarah, and she's got her! Slap Sarah's trailing button, and Sarah's spark out. Rebel skidding around the bend, trying to get to Margot on the back straight. Rebel closing the gap down. Margot's red button within striking distance as they approach the crossover. Margot scuttling to open up a bigger gap, but Rebel will buff it, and the firework display begins. Flash work again from the Glads. Explosive finishing, no points for the contenders. Lightning was very fast onto Sarah. Margot managed to keep Rebel in her wake until the halfway mark, then Rebel slapped her down and the chequered flag became a white flag of surrender. Three gone, two to go, 3-0 the score. So we now move into the men's event. And in the outside lane, wearing blue, it's Colum. In the inside lane, wearing red, it's James. And they're going to be chased by Cobra and Hunter. Contenders, ready! Editors, ready! Three, two, one! The guys must get a fast start. Colm's asking for trouble and gets it. Hunter strikes him out in double-quick fashion. James trying to lead Cobra on, but Cobra slaps him down. Another double bubble fire burst from the Gladiators. Well, the guys are still running so we might as well talk amongst ourselves while they expend their energy. It's an interesting point that in Australia, they actually stage this event the right way up. Hunter and Cobra happy with that inverted outing. James and Colin no doubt feeling better for doing that. But they won't feel better for seeing this. Colin barely makes it to the first corner before Hunter strikes, and even the enormous strength and stamina of James can't keep Cobra at bay for long. After three events, James stays on eight, Colin stays on six. Earlier backstage, here's how the toss affected the ladies' lineup. Good. Margot, your choice. Whiplash, hang tough, and jewel. Uh, jewel. Jewel, who do you want? I prefer Rio. You're going for Rio on jewel. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> you knock her off. <laughs> Sarah, that gives you um. Uh, she's gonna knock you off as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> Our first female contender is Margot! And she's facing Rio! And she only has herself to blame, so let's concern ourselves with the stats. Rio, 187 tall and 79 kilos, 12 and a half stone in the weight division. Across the platform, Margot will be at a disadvantage of 19 centimetres and 20 kilos, over three stone difference. So how long's this gonna last, we ask ourselves. Don't blink. Rio straight to work with the big bomb, steaming right to the chops, but Margot unrattled, digging some in herself. Another blistering right from Rio. Still, she needs more power to shift her. Margot's bent double. Oh, Rio looking to give a six to the best there. Margot won't budge. Scott's going to burst the blood vessel, but Margot's sticking with it and sticking to Rio. There'll be five if she can stay the distance. She's all over the place, but Rio can't finish her. Resilient performance from Margot. If she doesn't get any points from this, I'll give her a few myself. She's there! Five points and takes a reward right in the chops. Margot incredible in the face of one of our expert duelists. The crowd are going crazy. Well, Margot takes a right and anyone else would have toppled, but somehow almost impossibly keeps her balance. She even disproved Newton's law of gravity. <laughs> I can't quite believe what I've just seen. That was incredible. I can't believe I've done it. <laughs> she hit hard. How did you suck yourself up and manage to stay there? I don't know how I've done it. I just... She kept showing me and I, I thought I was down about six times. So many times, I, I mean, you were just hanging on. I just wanted to stay up. Uh, she hit so hard. Margot, you've got to be so pleased with yourself. Margot scores ten points! <laughs> Woo! Rio, I never thought I'd see this day. I cannot believe that she stayed up. I mean, she's amazing. Well done. Great players from Rio. Let's hear it for Margot and Rio. Our second female contender is Sarah. And she's facing Fox. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! And Sarah looking pensive. Here's why. The, the game that I'm most all scared of is Jewel, because I'm not that tall, I'm not that heavy, 
and I'm just gonna get hammered into the ground. <laughs> My tip, keep your head up. Fox has already proved herself tonight against Margot in Powerball. Now it's her turn to make Sarah's life a misery. Oh, Fox with a tentative and clumsy start. Sarah might pull something out of this. Oh, takes a face full of bugle stick and gets fixed by the Fox. Lee felt that as well. A brush with Fox means certain defeat. Oh, it was a couple of lefts, a quick jab, and then a chilling impact, which would have sunk the Titanic. Job done. Sarah didn't manage to stay out there very long. I'm absolutely gutted. <laughs> you did get one or two good blows in there. Yeah, she just got me one good one, and I was off. That was it. Let's hear it for Sarah and Fox. With four events done, Margot extends her lead eight points to nil. First male contender is James. And he's facing Vulcan. Over to John Anderson. Contender! James actually qualified for last season's campaign. Here's what went wrong. A week before the filming, I broke my foot jumping over an electric fence. Jump over electric fences all day long, and this time, just unbelievable, broke my foot. And uh, so I've been through the trials again, and I've done it again. I'm just over the moon, and like it's been 365 days since I've been waiting for this moment, and every single day I've thought about it. Well, let's see if he remembers this. Oh, I think he'd rather forget about that. A quick pig and a poke for the cattle farmer. Vulcan in three seconds. James' wife, Nikki, doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. James is laughing. Vulcan nudges a tickler to James's face, and well, that was that. James, uh, I don't suppose I should be laughing really, but uh, that was quick. Very disappointed with that one. Very disappointed. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, Vulcan, uh, I might. No, no, listen to me, Jeremy Gascon. No, you listen to me. I'm the man with the mic. Uh, let's give it up for James, and uh, not so much for Vulcan. He knows how to win over a crowd, does Vulcan. While Balkan stalks off, here's how Colum tried to pull a flanker earlier when the men's coin was tossed. Well, I'll go for Fox and Jill. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you can't have Fox. <laughs> She's a girl. Well noticed, Andrew Norgate. The second male contender is Colum. And he's up against the wall. Over to John Anderson. Well, Wolf has seen Vulcan's handiwork. Now he needs to prove himself. Oh, I can't believe it. He's gone. A 10-point knockout for the Belfast boy. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The family ecstatic. And Colin's quite pleased. Wolf, uh, this one's all yours. I mean, I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Maybe I ought to. Have you ever had a day when you get up and everything goes wrong? No. <laughs> I don't believe it. I mean, if I was a betting man, I'd have lost my money because I thought it was going to be an easy peasy one. Well, Colin, you were far from easy peasy, my man. It takes a wee Irish man to do it, as it says. The wee man that can! The wee man that can has scored 10 points. OK, OK, excuse me, everybody. It's really funny because he's just lost on that. Doesn't mean something to you, old man. It's time for you to retire. And let the young and good-looking man like me to take over. Young and good-looking man. Well, he certainly doesn't qualify. Oh, Laurel and Hardy are at it again, with Jeremy Guskin trying to gatecrash the act as well. Just like any normal day in Wolf's house, really. Vulcan and Wolf certainly scoring big laughs. Great. Just about sick and tired of the pair of you. Now, if you're that good, if you're that strong, and if you really want to fight, get loaded and get up there and fight it out. Well, the crowd liked the idea. Vulcan doesn't. And that man should sue his cosmetic surgeon. So here we have it. A showdown between Wolf and Vulcan. Or will it be a real show-up for both of them? 
Wolf has the edge when it comes to support from this crowd. They're both tooled up and ready to get down to it. So it's Wolf versus Vulcan to slug it out. Strikes me, we might as well score this by who makes the most ridiculous noises. They're both nasty, mean, ugly, horrible, smelly and badly behaved. So who cares who wins? They can't knock any sense out of each other because they haven't got any. The crowd are loving it. I'll tell you what, they'll both need a good lie down after this. Men of their age. There's the hooter and there's the result. Both gladiators evenly matched on the platforms. Oh, but Wolf's still the king when it comes to cheating. Wolf bells out to take the glory. But the Vulcan's sulking. Vulcan never afraid to state the obvious. But back here on planet Earth, after four events, here's a change round. James stays on eight, Colin moves to 16. And now with our next event. And first up to hang tough, it's Margo! And she's facing Rebel! Rebel already clocked up a quick win tonight on Skytrack. Hang tough, more her style. expression on her face if anyone needs help on hang tough it's margo the motor mechanic more used to piston rings than these ones and rebel a takedown specialist margo coming up on a red ring if she's hanging tough in the scoring zone when the time's out she'll score five points but there's ten waiting for her at rebel's platform rebel sizing her up margo coming left to reduce rebel's options she swung past rebel rebel seen it oh she's got the scissors on Half a minute to go, can she tough it out and maintain her grip? Oh, there's the answer. Rebel drags her to the mat. Margot's daughter, Jensen, resigns to that one. Let's have another look. Margot gets past Rebel, Rebel scissors her from behind, and then it's just a waiting game with Rebel using all her weight. Splat. going to be facing Siren. Siren's another queen of dragging them down, looking to make sure that Sarah's rung out on the rings, then hung out to dry. Siren knows that Sarah will be up for this because she has no points on the scoreboard whatsoever and a handy five will make some difference, let alone a big ten. Sarah swinging down the middle, probably not the best battle plan against Siren. They're on a head-to-head -head collision course. Siren gets her on the way back, Sarah one-handed. Siren's starting to get busy now, she won't let her off the hook. She'll try and get her off the rings. All her weight coming into play now. Oh, and Sarah laughing, but Siren's determined to wipe the smile off her face. And that does it. Effective handiwork from Siren. And brother Wayne and his friend disappointed with that. Siren locks on. The fitness teacher thinks it's a giggle, but Siren's deadly serious and teaches her a lesson. After five events, Margot stays on eight, Sarah on nil. Now we move into the men's event with James. One of the biggest and best of all time. The Saracen, a massive metre 91 tall and a hefty 111 kilos, 17 and a half stone heavy. Those figures demonstrate that James is 21 centimetres shorter and 38 kilos, 6 stone lighter. Yeah, yeah. 
Sarah won't stop till he's sorted this out. James has a national diploma in agriculture, but he knows the Saracen's an expert in this particular field. James quickly to the middle with well-practiced swings. Sarah coming for him, tries to tie him up, but James fends the gladiator off. Saracen back for more. Sarah goes for the belt, finds himself one-handed in a lazy spin, looking to get back online. James should look for a quick and easy escape route. Saracen back in control of his own wings, making a move again. Sarah's got him, literally by the seat of his pants, trying to get a purchase. That should just about do it. Sarah's tonnage way above anything James can cope with. Sarah's happy with that. Look at the concentration, makes a cheeky grab for James, tries to bring the legs into play, then the arm round the waist, and it was goodbye to James. Next up, it's Gollum. And he's going to be facing the Wolfman. He's seen off Vulcan already this evening. Now, can he get revenge on Colum? The hairy hound from hell shapes up like this. 183 tall and 95 kilos, 15 stone weight-wise. So we figure Colum is 10 centimetres shorter than Wolf. 22 kilos, that's three and a half stone lighter. What's Wolf doing on the phone? Must be calling Meals on Wheels or something. Ordering his dog food. Oh, no, I'm trying to make a conversation here. Can you not interrupt me? Get off the phone. What? Get off the yeah. phone. John okay, Anderson wants to done. start. Contender ready! Ready to ready! Let's go. Three, two, one! Now forget it if the phone rings, Wolf. It's the hang-tough rings you need to worry about right now. Column has proved he can score 10 at Wolf's expense, and here's another charge that Wolf needs to reverse. Wolf traversing left as Colum makes headway to the scoring zone. Remember, if Colum's in the red ring zone when the time up hoot has blown, he'll net five. If he makes it to the Wolf's platform, it's a full ten. Colum's progress stalled for a moment, can't maintain that forward momentum, but the Wolf's not exactly in a threatening position. Time is ticking down, and Wolf still has his back to the action. He needs to make some progress if he's going to keep face here. John Anderson telling Colum he can't just hang about and wait for the time to elapse. Wolf needs to pull something out here. Otherwise, Colum will score five with very little effort. Wolf could do with calling Saracen up on that phone and getting some advice. The time is going down. Looks like Colum's on for his five points. Wolf with a mangy performance, often so dogged on the rings, but this time just never got to grips with the situation at all. The family more than happy that he didn't. Wolf went forward, then went back and more or less stayed there. Colin, you almost looked quite surprised when the whistle went and you found yourself in the scoring zone. It's just this hand, it's given me so much dip. And in practice, I couldn't even get to the second ring. And I know I've been watching uh, some of the videos off Hunt or Wolf, and he's very good at this, so I was pretty terrified. But I'm on top. He never made that phone call, did he? No, he certainly didn't. Let's hear for Colm, and well done, Wolfman. Well done, Wolfman. She can't have seen the same event as us. With five down and the eliminator to go, James stays on eight, Colm moves to 21. So the Wolfman didn't get his prey, but we have now thankfully eliminated the gladiators. So all that remains the eliminator itself. Join us after the break for more action here on Gladiators. The Gladiators! The Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham where it's eliminator time. Now in the women's event, Sarah failed to score in the games. Margot's got eight points, so that's an eight point difference giving Margot a four second head start. Over to Jeremy. Margot, uh, you've got a bit of a buffer there with four seconds. Yeah, I'm just going to take it easy, just focus on what I'm doing. Don't worry about Sarah and just go for it. OK, Sarah, four seconds. Can you make that up? Let's hope so. Yeah, I'm just going to focus and hopefully the chasing is going to make it work. Yeah. Well, if your supporters have anything to do with it, I'm sure you'll make it up. Good luck. Go over to the start and I'll see you at the finish. Over to John Anderson. Margot. 
you will go on my first whistle. Sarah, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Sterlingshire motor mechanic Margot McMillan attacks the hurdles to capitalise on that four-second advantage. Sarah Hasselby, the fitness instructor from Scunthorpe, gets her challenge underway. Margot bounces to the first of the Carganet. She's led this contest from the very start. She's not about to let that change on the eliminator. Sarah's brother Wayne demanding more urgency from her, but Margot's on the downside of the net. Next comes the skin-splitting rope climb that's claimed more than its fair share of victims. Margot's determined not to be another statistic. Boyfriend Scott's huge support from him. Hate to get on his wrong side. Sarah's a circuit training specialist, so the elements involved in this course should suit her. Gets the rope done. Margot making heavy weather of the hand ladder, and Sarah comes streaking through. Superb overhead work from Sarah. Finishes the ladder and tackles the trapeze. They prayed for a miracle and they might be witnessing one. Margot to the trapeze. What must be going through her mind right now? A four second head start stripped away on the hand ladder. But Margot's back. Scott really is fearsome with his encouragement. Margot keeping a very cool head. Didn't panic when it started to go pear shaped. And now digging in to get the gantry first. Wayne, Pauline, and John can't believe how close this is. Margot will hit the high level gantry in first place. The power elements suit Margot, and it's the speed disciplines that so clearly favour Sarah. Earthbound on the zip line. Margot knees up for that Mother Brown splashdown. Sarah on the final approach, splashes the crash mat into the graveyard. Sarah's boyfriend Lee knows there's still hope. Margot steady on the balance beam, carefully down. Sarah. Coming again, Margot, second seesaw. It's all about the explosive burst up the Travelator. Who's got it and who hasn't? Margot steadies herself for the attack, takes it on. She's got the power. The final swing to glory is all hers. Margot McMillan into the quarterfinals. Sarah into reverse as Margot's family and boyfriend Scott smile at last. Sarah, it's not really been her night. Sucking in the air. Poising herself for another muscle-burning blast up that conveyor belt of courage. Here she comes, head up high. Go on, girl. She's there, just fighting through the pain barrier. Sarah Hasselby finishes it off emphatically. Well, congratulations, Margaret McMillan. You're through to the quarter-final. Oh, I believe we've got to go through all this again, but I'll give her a go. And I have to say, you had us all worried. It was a very exciting eliminator, both of you catching up with each other. You got a little bit stuck there on the uh, hand ladder. I got stuck on the, the ladder and a big cheer went up and Sarah flew past me. I was like, oh, no! <laughs> I just really concentrated on the carbonate and just uh, done the technique thing and it paid off. So will all you Scots come back? Yeah. Well, they're coming back, so we'll look forward to seeing you in the quarters as well. Let's hear it for Margaret! Sarah, after everything you've been through, it's just marvellous that you can still smile. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a good race. I really, really enjoyed that. I mean, you got uh, up with Margaret and then you overtook and I thought, this is yours. I bossed it on the cargo net and then the travel later. Well, I just, I just lost it when I saw Margot get up, so... But I've had a brilliant time and thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> We certainly enjoyed having you, and now I think uh, you deserve a huge hug from your boyfriend, Lee. Let's hear it for Sarah! Sarah, magnanimous in defeat. Margot arrives to accept the acclaim of her family. And there's the hug from Lee. All right, all right, that's enough. There's children watching. In the women's fastest eliminator race for the £1,000 first prize, Margot's time well outside the existing record. Next, the guys are up. Column leads by 13 points, which all boils down to a 6.5 second head start. Well, James, I don't know if you've been able to do any training for the eliminator on the farm. Uh, no, not really. Just um, go for it, just go around it, and that's what I'm going to have to do, I think. Buckle down, and six and a half seconds must make you feel a little bit more relaxed, eh, Colm? Yeah, it certainly does, but it still doesn't take the pressure off. I'm still very nervous for this eliminator because I want to win so much from my family and friends that came all over from Belfast. Absolutely. Well, listen, the very best of luck to the two of you, and I'll see you both at the end. Over to John Anderson. Colin's girlfriend, Imelda, and mum, Dolores, can only wait and agonise over what will be. Oh, James's niece, Jade, more vocal. Oh, Colm. 
you will go on my first whistle. James, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Colm Curran from Belfast springs into action, knows that James Barrow from Burnley has the power and the wherewithal to have worn down that six and a half second lead by the time they hit the travelator. The chase is on. Colm tops off the net with James fast over and under the hurdles. Kangaroos. Nicky on her feet with Connor. Colm, the fitness instructor, has the rope next to consider. The Curran family won't relax until it's done. James untidy off the net, slow onto the rope climb. On the bike, Colum tries to pump the pedals for momentum, but he's slow to get underway on the overhead bike. Dolores pedaling faster than Colum. James starting his biking unwieldy action. That'll cost him time. Colum will get a grip on the double swing move to the giant cargo net. Spans Death Valley, and now it's time to dig deep and hit the heights. Oh, James with a disastrous bike traverse. His pedal power deserting him dramatically. Almost pedestrian. Colum smooth on the net. James makes the aerial changeover. Colum will hit the top of the net with the best part of his head start intact. Colum to the zipper. Will it be his undoing? James climbs with solid, steady determination. Colum zip line. Firm landing. Knows the worst is yet to come. James to the gantry. His fans realize it's slipping away. Colum on the first seesaw. Assured and stylish. The second should be a formality. He can't ease off now, James splashes down, Colum unsteady on the landing, Dolores can't stand it, Colum quickly determined to finish it in one, he's there, Colum Curran is a quarter-finalist on Gladiators! James eases down the final seesaw, superb contender gave the Glads a run for their money but couldn't pull back that head start, the final test of a contender's medal, he passes that test with flying colours! Early on in the show, you said you were the man that can, and you certainly delivered the goods. Yep, I'm the Irish man that can, and this is only a small bit that I can do. You're through to the quarterfinals. How did Chef tell you about that? Oh, brilliant. Couldn't believe it. You went through the, the eliminator in 134. That's a great time. It is, but it's going to get better because this finger's going to get better. Well, it was a fantastic performance. Let's hear it for Colum. Column, but I'm afraid yep. you're going to be returning back to Lancashire. Yeah, yeah, very disappointed in. Well, in the duel, that's what I'm most disappointed in. But like, uh, put up as best as you could. And thanks for everybody's coming. I've had unbelievable the sport of art. And I just, you know, really like to thank you for coming and cheering me on. Thanks a lot. Well, it's been great to have you on the show, James. You've been a real character. Let's hear it for James Barrow. And Colum feeling the heat as he accepts the adulation. And a big hug from Mum Dolores. James, a hero to his fans. Hello, what's this? That's not isotonic, is it? Colum's finishing time in the fastest men's eliminator contest, way outside the record of 118.3. Back now to Jeremy and Lily. evening but the two eliminators certainly made up for it no it's fantastic it was very very exciting if you want more of that join us next week here on gladiators <laughs> for safety reasons do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on gladiators what wonderful retro prizes will be hiding behind bully's prize board tonight Join Jim in a few moments and he'll show you Bullseye next. And then after that, Bradley's here along with Tim Vine and Vanessa Feltz who are playing for charity. The Chase Celebrity Special at nine, new to challenge.